Oh. Holy shit. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from that. Um, and as I'm sitting here, you know, doing what I do, I'm trying to think of what to say. Because it's one of those experiences, and I want to stress that this is an experience. This is an experience. Um, it's one of those experiences you only get to have once. That was a thing that came to me as I'm watching the movie. Um, there's a very specific moment, and I'll talk about it here in a minute, or just kind of mention it here in a minute. Um, there's a very specific moment in the film, and I'm sitting there watching it, and it hits me. You know, the crowd reaction, that epic fucking moment, and you're like, I can only experience it once. And it's just kind of a very, not in a sad way, it's a very existential kind of woo kind of way that, uh, whew, um, I always tell my kids, opening night, I always tell them that they need to love the theater, they gotta love the performance because it only happens once. You know, that group of people is only together to play that group of characters for that run of the show, and after that it's gone. And while that is kind of a good metaphor for this movie, it's more a metaphor for the experience of watching it. I will no doubt watch this movie a million times. I will prob I will own it. I will probably buy uh, come see it again, honestly. Um, but in terms of that first visceral experience, I'm glad I came when I did. I'm glad my friend invited me. I'm glad that I saw it with this crowd because it made it really an experience. Um, so that being said, uh, it's going to be very hard to talk about this movie and not talk spoilers. Okay? Um, I can give you a very, you know, skin and bones kind of thing, but I don't think that's going to do it justice. I want to talk about this fucking movie. So I want to say to you now, Go see the movie, okay? You know you're going to, all right? This is like reviewing a Harry Potter film. You know you're going to go see this movie. So you don't need me to tell you that it's good, all right? It is. But if you are if you're, if you just want to know what I think, I think it's awesome. Do I think it's perfect? I don't think it's perfect. But I think it's awesome, and you need to go. You deserve, and I, I'm not even worried too much about spoilers. There are spoilers. But I'm more talking about things that you should see for the first time without anybody telling you it's going to come. So it just happens and you can just sit there and go, fuck yes. All right. Um, so the movie is good. Go see it. You're going to. But from here on out, from this stage on, there are spoilers. We are in spoiler territory. Okay. I'm going to try not to, but I'm going to. Okay, please be aware of that, and if you want to wait till you see the movie and then watch this, great. If you don't care, okay, fine. But I want to put it out there because I, I worked very hard not to be spoiled on this, and I don't want you to be spoiled on this. Okay, so let's talk about Endgame. Uh... So first off, I think the first thing that kind of struck me about this movie is just how clever the the advertising for it was. Because this movie is not the movie you think it is from the advertising. Okay? The advertising has you believe that, you know, this is all a movie about... Uh, Captain America and the crew getting together and gathering all the people up who are still left. The, you know, they the posters with all the people who didn't get, you know, snapped 
are, you know, give you this image that they're going to gather together all these folks who are still left and go out and, and get and get Thanos. And that does happen in the first 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah, the first 10 minutes of the movie is basically what all the trailers and the posters and every other form of advertising for this movie have been showing you. And then it goes off in a completely different direction. Completely different. Whoa, potholes there, baby. Um, and I'm going to be honest. It's a direction that I, I didn't really dig that much. Okay, so here we are. Spoiler territory. You know, go away if you don't want to hear it. All right. So... Um, well, I won't get into why or whatever, but basically what has to happen is, uh, through comic book magic, um, the Avengers have to go back in time to various points in their lives or various points of their own movies and recollect the Infinity Stones to reassemble the new Infinity Gauntlet and bring everybody back. Okay? So that's the long and short of it. Um, there's more details and more things going on. Um, and this takes up a big chunk of the movie. And it's a chunk that I'm not really all that enthused about. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, first of all, whenever we bring time travel into something, I tend to get a little groany. It's like, oh, God. You know? And honestly, um, the time travel mechanic or MacGuffin or whatever you want to call it is kind of exactly what you think it is. It's basically an excuse for us to take a walking tour of kind of the MCU's greatest hits, you know, and poke fun and laugh a bit at this, that, or the other moment, um, you know. Uh, okay, here's one I don't think is a big spoiler. So they go back to the very beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy when Star-Lord's doing, you know, the opening credit dance and he's dancing around and singing and, all, and it's playing the music and he's in... But then they show it from someone else's point of view watching him. So he's just out there singing and, you know, you don't hear the music. Hey, hey, what's the matter, boy? I'm doing this song in terrible injustice. Um, and they're kind of reacting to how silly he is. So it's a lot of that. It is a lot of... Uh, hey, let's laugh at this moment, or let's go back to this moment, or you know what did happen after at the very end of the Avengers when after they all pose uh, in front of Loki, you know what what what, was, what happened then? It's like I really you know, and that part of the film went on for a long time, and it had some chuckles, it had some laughs, and it had some nice character beats but ultimately I felt like it was it, was, it just wasn't what it wasn't the movie I paid for or the movie I was hoping it to be I guess um, so that part of the movie is not terrible it's just not incredibly good all right and that's me being honest however, <laughs> so that takes up a good huge chunk of the movie but then the ending happens and fuck a doodle do baby <laughs> the the ending of this the showdown with Thanos and everything that comes after it, it is holy damn. <laughs> it is epic 
personified. It is the reason the word epic was invented. It pays off everything we get to see everything it's damn nation is it hardcore I cannot say enough it is the ending of the original Avengers it is uh, it is the airport fight in Civil War it is it's that feeling you got when you watched Black Panther or Captain Marvel and thought, boy, I'm watching something kind of important here. It's all of that rolled up into one and it is more. Um, I cannot, and again, it was an experience, okay? I actually, I saw this movie um, the first showing the day before it f officially opened. I went, uh, a friend of mine, a guy I used to work for, texted me and said, hey, I got this ticket, you want to go? And I was like, hell's to the yes, I want to go. And so I never do that because I'm not a big one for that. I don't like, you know, I, don't, I just don't like the whole thing. But being in there with that audience, man, people who are cheering when things happen. People who, I mean, we were clapping. We were cheering. It was, and it was all earned because of how long the 10 years and the 20 some films we've invested in all of these characters and they're all there. They are all there and it is just I finally get why people love Lord of the, the the Return of the King. I'm not a Tolkien fan, and I wasn't a fan of the Lord of the Rings movies, but I finally get it. Uh, great action and uh, great loss. People, so as you would no doubt expect, characters die, um, and you knew some of it was coming, but the way they did it. Um, and the performances of the actors giving it. Um, man, did it, did it hit hard. I mean, would you believe it if someone told you 10, 15 years ago that at the end of a comic book movie, people would be openly weeping? There were people in that screening room men, women, children openly weeping at these deaths. And again, they're earned because we came to love the characters. Um, and I think that's what makes the movie work is that we get, we get resolution, we get closure. Maybe not always the closure we were hoping for, maybe not always the closure we wanted, but we get closure on these characters. They part of the, the long runtime is giving our main core cast of characters a chance to breathe and to wrap up their stories. And I'm gonna say I think all the stories are wrapped up very, very well. They're, they all end the way they should. Um so is this film perfect? No, there, it's not entirely perfect. Um, there are some things I kind of didn't like or, or whatever. So first of all, um, I, I compared this movie to Return of the King, and it's like it in more ways than one. It has got so many fucking endings. It ends once, and then it ends a bunch of times. And you're just like, okay... Like, it's almost another movie. You know, they could have made this three movies uh, with how many endings they had. Um, I did not like what they did with Thor. Um, or rather... I don't know. It felt like he went... He strayed the furthest from where he began. 
you know? And that, uh, they did it as a joke. And I, uh, the joke was funny for like five minutes. And then the joke kept going. And therefore, any real deep emotional stuff we could have gotten out of Thor, which I think there was payoff there, I feel it was lessened because of uh, just how much of a joke he was being played up as. It's not to say he didn't have his kick-ass moments. It's not to say he didn't rule. It's just to say that I feel like his moments were the weakest. Honestly. Um, I felt of all the characters getting a payoff, his, his was the weakest. Um, but that being said, there is a lot of great resolution to these characters. Um, and more than a little mystery. Um, okay. Seriously, spoiler alert here, turn it off. All right. So, uh, I'll try to be like, so there's a, there is a funeral for one of our lost characters. Okay. And in that funeral, the camera does this long shot going over all the faces of all these families and all these characters we've come to know. You've got the Avengers, you've got Hawkeye and his family, you've got, uh, you know, Ant-Man and his crew, you've got the Black Panther and his crew, and it's panning over, and, and before it gets to Captain Marvel, who's standing on the steps of a house, it pans over, and there's a kid, a teenager, and I have no clue who that kid was, but he was standing by himself, prominently. And I'm looking at it going, okay. And I hear, I heard other people in the audience going, who is that? So clearly a bit of a, a, a breadcrumb for what's going to come next. And let me, let me also spare you this. Um, don't stay through the credits. No, there is no, oh like, stay Toward, till the ending credits or t toward the end of the character credits, you know, where they show each person and put their name up. That's really awesome and really, you know, uh, you know, really great. Really kind of one last yeah. Um, but there's no no post credit sequence. So, um, so yeah, it's who is that kid? Uh, yeah. So this is funny. This is a weird feeling because we know we know this series isn't over. We know the Marvel Cinematic Universe is far from done. I mean, hell, they had the, they had the trailer for Spider-Man out before this fucking movie came out, so kind of ruined it there. Um, and you know we've got sequels to uh, Doctor Strange. You know... Um, uh, you know there's going to be more Captain Marvel and Black Panther movies. Both those movies are huge cultural milestones. No way Disney's going to go, oh, we made enough money on those. Um, but it does make you... This, this clearly is an ending. It is an end of this phase, this chapter, this chunk of the Marvel Universe. Um, so the question I have going forward is, where do they go forward? What is going to be the big linking event bringing all of these characters back together? You know, what, you know, or, you know, bringing the ones that are left back together. Because I think you're going to need that. You're going to need that team up movie just kind of going, oh, you know, we're not going to do this anymore. I don't think that's going to work. Um, you know, I wonder what's going to become of some of the franchises. Because, you know, the status quo is, is shooken up pretty hard here. 
okay? Um, in good ways, I think. So I'm wondering what are they going to do with the characters going forward in movies and TV shows and other things. But uh, it's a movie that I both love and I'm sad it's over. But it's a, it's a good feeling. So um, what else is there to say? I really can't think of anything else to say because anything else is just me going, oh, God, that moment, oh, God, that moment. And again, I want you to experience those moments for yourselves. Um, so final grade for Avengers Endgame. Shouldn't come as a surprise, folks. It's an, it's an A+. I'd give it an A++ if I could, but it's an A+. Um, it took its time fluffing about, and I don't, and again, I don't think it was as good of an ending, uh, ending a complete movie as it could have been, but shit be praised that that final, that final movie within a movie is everything you want it to be and more. As advertised for fans of the series, it's what we've been waiting for. So... Yeah, gotta love it. Uh, that's all for me on this one. I can't really say much more. So, um, until next time, drive safe, and I'll see you at the movies.